We'd like to welcome State Representative Kathy Ann Reinstein, the State Senator Jennifer Flanagan, Coleman Nee, Secretary of Veterans Services for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and other elected officials who are here with us today. Thank you for being here. Also, Lieutenant Commander, retired Thomas Kelly of the U.S. Navy, River Assault Division 152 is with us today. Mr. Kelly is a proud recipient of one of the nation's highest military honors, the Medal of Honor. So congratulations and thank you. And finally, a very big thank you to our presenting gold sponsor, Santander Shareholders, represented this morning by Susana Morolalleja. Did I say it right, Susana? <laughs> She's the director of the shareholder relations, and please give her a warm welcome this morning. Susanna. Did I say it correctly? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Good morning. Thank you for attending the 2013 Women Who Care Leadership Breakfast. My name is Susanna Moraleja, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to one of Boston's largest networking events for women. As the director of Santander Shareholders Relations U.S., I'm honored to be a part of this annual event, which supports the critical programs provided by the American Red Cross of Eastern Massachusetts. As a global bank, Santander maintains a strong relationship with the Red Cross on both international and local levels. Locally, you probably know us as Sovereign Bank, but we're excited to rebrand to Santander in the US on October 17, 2013. Sovereign Santander has worked with the Red Cross of Eastern Massachusetts on many initiatives in the past, and we look forward to continuing this important relationship after the name change. As an organization, one of Santander's priority is to provide support to the local communities that it serves. In, Ma in March, Santander shareholders advanced that objective through voting in the 2013 proxy. By participating in the proxy vote, shareholders raised $25,000 for the American Red Cross. It was our honor to donate those funds to an organization that continually provides relief and support to local communities. Before closing, I would like to extend a special thanks to the hardworking members of the Red Cross that make events like today a reality. The work that you do plays a critical role in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. And now I'd like you to meet three very special people, Paula, Danielle, and Carlos. Good morning, everyone. When I came to the Red Cross, almost 10 years now, I was looking. I, I didn't that do way. that. I, I didn't do that. that. <laughs> I just want everybody to hear you. There okay. you go. Came to the Red Cross to empower myself and to help others and to give back to my communities. I took the training, and now here I am. <laughs> During Hurricane Sandy, I was at the shelter in Fall River. I managed the shelter with other volunteers. After we closed that shelter, I was deployed to New York for five weeks. The first two weeks, I was in Manhattan. For three weeks, I was in Staten Island. I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> I've never met so many people in New York that are so grateful for the Red Cross. My heart ached for them because they lost everything that they had. And all I could do is be there and help them, either listen to them or give them my shoulder. But then I look around with all the volunteers that we have from all over the United States and some from Mexico who are there to help New York. After New York, we had the blizzard Nemo. Again, we opened a shelter in Fall River. I managed the shelter, and I was able to get some new volunteers to help our volunteers man the shelter. I 
I'm Paula Perales, and I am the Red Cross. In July, my Somerville apartment was burned in an arson attack that destroyed six buildings. At the Red Cross shelter I went to, I learned what the next steps were to recover when a fire took everything. And when my friends and family asked how they could help, I said, get renter's insurance and donate to the Red Cross. My name is Danielle Glazer, and I am the Red Cross. Good morning, everybody. I was at the Boston finish line hanging out American flags to honor my son, Alexander, who was killed in Iraq. When the bombs went off, I used the first eight skills that I learned in Costa Rica with the Red Cross to save lives. I'm Carlos Arredondo, and I'm, a, I'm a, the Red Cross. Thank you. This is my last flag. I was hoping to give it to, to one of the na National Guard runners. And then later on, I just find the flag back in my pocket. You know, I say, oh my God, it's full of blood. Carlos Arredondo was remembering his son the day two bombs changed Boston, handing out flags to those running in honor of a fallen soldier. Being there, watching these people going by, cheering them, giving them flags, and oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then suddenly, was a cloud of smoke and no one there and people running. His instinct was to run toward the chaos. I just went like this, and then I said, God protect me. This picture captures his dramatic effort. The ghostly face in the wheelchair is that of Jeff Bauman, <clears throat> the man Carlos helped save. It's one of the most horrific and yet iconic photos taken that day. Wow, see, it's, it's this dark area, yeah. all this, uh, this dark area was on fire. I saw Jeff, you know, and in a big puddle of blood, you know, and he was missing two limbs right there in the spot. He says it was a marathon itself to save Jeff. It's, it's a situation with no scripts. Right. Suddenly just happened and, and you gotta do the best you can, you know. Carlos's best comes at a price. He's seen a therapist, hoping to curb the damage a moment like this can inflict on survivors. The sight of the explosion come too often to my, to my mind and, and keep repeating, you know. But there is a path to healing. Just yesterday, Carlos reunited with Jeff. It's a moment he never had with his oldest son, who died on the battlefield in Iraq. He's 27 years like my son. He's, uh, I got to see him, tell him how beautiful he is. Perhaps no surprise, Carlos wants no part in being called a hero. Uh, it's been heroes in the past, but you know, being called hero with people in the hospital and families buried, their daughters and sons, you know, it's very hard to to handle. Our thanks to Carlos, to those who shared their Red Cross moments, Paul and Danielle, to everyone who played a role before, during, and April after April 15th, many of whom are here today. I would like them to please stand, the first responders, police, fire, EMS, members of the BAA, and our own Red Cross volunteers and staff, who helped in so many countless ways. Thank you, please stand. Good morning. My name is Jarrett Barrios. I am the CEO of the American Red Cross in New Massachusetts. Carlos Arredondo is the face of the American Red Cross. Trained by the Costa Rican Red Cross, he was able to join in the joy of the marathon and then help pick up the pieces after. In the bombings aftermath and the days and weeks that followed, volunteers like Carlos served over 14,000 meals to runners, first responders, 
and those in our Red Cross shelters in Watertown during the day of the lockdown. We provided over 4,000 mental health support visits for those impacted by the bombings and the lockdown. With the city of Boston, we ran a family assistance shelter at the Seaport Hotel to coordinate the care and recovery of families and victims of the bombings. We provided casework to those people that continues today. Paula Ferrales, who you heard from before, Carlos, is a volunteer shelter supervisor. Last February, when the blizzards hit the Cape in southeastern Massachusetts, she helped lead over 140 Red Cross volunteers to give shelter and warm meals to over 2,000 residents of the Commonwealth. These were people without power, at risk of suffering from hypothermia, who had to be evacuated from their homes. We even delivered 500 meals to the Wampanoag Reservation on the Cape when they called the Bureau of Indian Affairs for help after the blizzard. Altogether, that blizzard response was our largest since the blizzard of 1978. Danielle Glazer, who you also heard from this morning, is the face of the American Red Cross. Altogether, in our region, we responded to seven major disasters, and yet our largest disaster response this year and every year are those nightly house fires, when somebody's house goes up and the family is displaced. And when there's a fire, and when you lose your home, it's the Red Cross which drives up, and if it's cold, we have a blanket and we have food for you. We work with families to replace the medicines they may have lost. We put them up in a hotel. We provide them with financial assistance so they can buy some clothes and begin to get their life together again. This past year, we helped 1,030 families here in eastern Massachusetts who lost their homes to fires. By far, our largest response in any capacity. We provided over $700,000 in financial assistance. We don't ask people to pay it back. We give it to them to help them take their next steps in their recovery, because we are the American Red Cross. Since 1881, the Red Cross has been one of America's most respected charities. Since our humble founding by Clara Barton, a Massachusetts native, we've striven mightily to be a source of care and comfort for victims of war and strife and those impacted by natural disasters those in need of a kind heart and help from our volunteer force for good. Our Massachusetts Red Cross continues this tradition through the mighty work of our volunteers. But the Red Cross faces many challenges. In a society that's changing, nationally we've seen a trend. Nationally, the Red Cross has seen a decline by 8% in the number of our volunteers. And you see, this is really troubling because 96% of our work is done by volunteers. It's our volunteers like Paula who lead our responses. That's why we're able to say 91 cents on every dollar that you donate goes directly to the people we are helping. Because we are led by volunteers, we are volunteers. So one of my jobs today is to say thank you it's been a hard year for us, as you've heard, but despite the difficulties, I'm really proud to say the American Red Cross here in Massachusetts has risen to the occasion, as have our volunteers. This year, we have increased the number of volunteers in eastern Massachusetts by 180%. We are very proud of that number because that means 180% more folks able to serve the most vulnerable, those who've been victims of strife and natural disaster. We'd like to say thank you. And I'd ask those of you in the audience, if you have helped us by volunteering at one of our shelters, could you please stand so that we can thank you today? Please stand if you've worked in one of our shelters. If you have worked here, or in New York or in New Jersey responding to Sandy, will you please stand and stay standing if you're standing. If you have responded, 
to a fire on one of our DAT teams. Will you please stand up so that we can say thank you? Please stay standing. If you have volunteered in one of our food pantries in New Bedford or Boston, will you please stand this year or any year? Thank you very much. If you believe that these volunteers are part of the answer in our country at caring for all, will you please join me in a round of applause of thanks. Thank you all. I'd now like to invite my colleague Pat Flavin from the TJX companies uh, to join me at the stage. He's representing uh, Jerome Smalls of the TJX companies, uh, and I'm going to, uh, with a special introduction, TJX is one of our dearest partners here in Massachusetts. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. That's a, that's a tough act to follow. I've been with TJX, it was uh, 28 years last week, so half my life. And I didn't know if you knew Jared, but I'm connected with the Red Cross because they've been cleaning up after me for years. My first day of work was Hurricane Bob. Uh, living down in Brockton, um, called into work, said I'm not going to be in. My boss was, uh, was from California. She said, what do you mean? They said, Harvey Leonard said I had to stay home. So <laughs> from day one, it started. Went to Evansville, Indiana. There were tornadoes. I left to come home to Boston, but the Red Cross came in to take care of the folks that were in, in Evansville. Went out to California to open our first TJ Maxx stores. Earthquakes. I left, the Red Cross came in. So for a while, people were afraid to travel with me, and I was kind of <laughs> the master of disaster. So then I took a job in the home office that, that dealt with employee relations, and we called associate relations at TJX, and got to live daily what the Red Cross goes through with disasters, you know, whether it's an individual family, a group, a town, a city, a country, in disaster and get to see that firsthand every day. The Red Cross was always our company of choice or donation of choice to be able to go in and, and help out. We get replies or, or inquiries from all around the country and the world now to help out with disasters. And we made a conscious decision to be able to choose Red Cross as our focal point to give donations because they have feet on the ground. They can respond to what individuals need. It's great to give you know, cases of water, but if people don't have shoes or a place to live, that water is not going to matter to them. The dollars that we give are judiciously used. Uh, 91 cents on the dollar goes right to direct support and help. 